Welcome to TFR Newsroom. I'm your host, Swapnil Bharatiya. And today we have two guests from Gremlin, Tammy Brandt, Principal SRE, and Alex Rag, Senior Product Marketing Manager at the company. Tammy, Alex, it's great to have you both on the show. Thanks so much for having us. It's great to be here. Yes, thank you. It's great to be here. A few weeks or a month ago, I talked to Colton, uh, and we discussed uh, how Gremlin is helping SRE's DevOps uh, community with its uh, certification program and i have heard that you know the program has some you know really exciting you know uh, interest so uh, i want to hear from you before we talk about the response to the program if you can just brief our audience what is this program all about alex and i created the certificate program together along with um, our co-workers rob as well who recently joined gremlin as well and it's been so exciting because in just five weeks, we've almost had 5,000 people enroll in the certificate. And actually my LinkedIn is broken. It's unusable because people are sharing their certificates to LinkedIn, tagging me, and I just can't use LinkedIn anymore. It's great to see how excited everyone is about this. If you can quickly tell what the program is all about. Yeah, so the uh, the CERT program, you know, well, there are multiple goals that we had in mind. We wanted to create it, right? I mean, as the market is heating up for solutions like chaos engineering, we're seeing a whole lot of practitioners want the opportunity, um, you know, certify, right, that they are chaos engineering experts, professionals, want the ability to then share that and make it public with the rest of the market, with their potential employers, with their teams. Um, so we wanted to provide an opportunity for that, right? So that was our that was sort of our north star in this process. Let's provide something that allows you to make sure that you know all the fundamentals, all the basics, and a few advanced tactics and tricks, and be able to share that expertise with the rest of the world. Uh, which one of you uh, work closely with the users and customers? Because uh, when you do build uh, the certificate program, you have to touch some pain point because uh, especially with training and uh, chaos engineering, you know, uh, while well, the term is new, it has been you know used for a while. So there still needs a lot of awareness also about that. So when, as you said, you know, your team uh, along with Ron, uh, Rob, build the program. So can you talk about what feedback you received from the community or what pain point as you see, then you're like, hey, let's create something that will help the community. Sure thing, yeah. I met with over a hundred people to be able to gain uh, insights and understand what types of problems they would like to have. Um, get help from us to solve before we created the certificate program. And that's actually what really influenced what we created. So when I met with the folks, there was a few key pain points. One was um, for our customers, they're trying to hire people who are experts in Gremlin and experts in chaos engineering. So that was a big one. They kept asking, can you help me find people to hire, to add to my team, to help us do this work, especially when it comes to automation and the more advanced types of chaos engineering. And really for that, we took a step back and realized it's very important to deliver this first initial foundation certificate, which is a um, really like a 101 foundation Gremlin chaos engineering engineering certificate and we plan to do more later. And a few other things that I asked customers was, especially our banking and finance customers, you know, they have to do mandatory training and development. So I asked them if this would fit in with the curriculums that they have internally. They were like, yes, can you please make it? So the exam takes around 30 minutes max. You can do it completely online. They preferred multiple choice questions for this foundation exam. Um, they really wanted to make it very inclusive and accessible to folks from all over the world as well. So just to make it not, you know, you need to go into a special place, have a proctor. It, you can only do it if you're in America. I'm Australian, so I completely understand that. There's a lot of certificates where you actually can't take them unless you're in America. And that's just not possible right now with COVID. So we really listened to everything that our customers told us and we made sure to make this completely accessible. The other thing we did was we actually had um, five different customers go through the exam before we published it to get their feedback on the questions. We really wanted to make sure that it wasn't too easy. That was a big thing. We wanted to make sure it was challenging, made sure it covers enough areas that they could feel confident that if someone has passed this certificate, they should get a phone call, like a screening call as part of an interview process. And they were like, yep, this is great. Like, I'm excited for you to launch it. Um, and since then, it's just been so amazing to see how excited 
excited everyone is. Uh, we've had over a thousand people pass the exam and get certified, but 5,000 enrollments. So it is not an easy exam, but I think that's what you want, right? You want it to be challenging and to feel really amazing once you get it. Can you also explain how does this, you know, program actually work? And also, as you said, you know, that uh, 5,000 enrollments, but around 1,000. So uh, how to kind of tell them to prepare for it? And uh, uh, how do you really validate that? You no, know, because sometimes a lot of people take certification program because they really want to be certified. Sometimes they just want a certification so they have a badge. So, <laughs> so that, you know, how do you ensure that people actually know what they're claiming to know? So there are multiple questions in there, but it's more or less around how the program works. How do you ensure people are ready for it? And then they are actually certified. Yeah, sure thing. So the way that the problem works is um, I worked with Alex to create a landing page at gremlin.com slash certification. So if you go to that page, you can click to enroll in the exam. And then that takes you to a platform that we decided to use called Coassemble, which is actually um, an Australian startup based out of Newcastle. Really awesome, cool product. And they have this amazing interface. Um, so that's just coassemble.com. And once you then just enroll in the exam, you can use your, you know, Google email address, your Gmail, your work email, um, whatever you prefer. You then are able to start the exam and you'll be taken to a list of multiple choice questions. We definitely recommend that folks prepare before taking the exam uh, because you don't get unlimited tries. You can only retry three times and then you'll be locked out of the exam. So that is an important thing to know. Don't just like quickly click, okay, I'm going to do this right now um, because you don't get unlimited tries. And then once you do pass that exam, you need to get 80% plus to be able to pass the exam. Then we're using another platform called Accredible, which will actually email you your certificate. And then you can easily add that to your LinkedIn profile, click to share on LinkedIn, click to share on Twitter. So that's been awesome. And we've seen people from tons of amazing companies go and get certified, seen loads of folks from IBM, Dell, Cisco, Grubhub, just like tons of companies, um, so many different places all over the world, uh, tech companies, e-commerce, retail, finance, health insurance, just every industry because everyone understands that the internet needs to be reliable. We need to understand how things break. We need to prepare for this, be proactive and make sure that our systems can handle when failure occurs. So I think engineers deep down, they know that this is a very important skill and they're excited to be able to learn it and get certified. So to be able to learn the skills to pass the exam, Alex and I created a prep session, which is a webinar and folks can go and get that as an on-demand webinar. Um, we'll share the link to that too. And then we also created a GitHub repo, which is a list of all the links that we covered from the webinar. So maybe Alex can talk more about the prep session and how that was received and what kinds of questions we got. Yeah, absolutely. No, the prep session was awesome. Um, you know, we had you know, a thousand plus registrants. We had a ton of people who were there, uh, you know, for the point that Tammy mentioned, right? Preparing for this certification program is really important. If you don't get the 80%, uh, you can't take it right after three tries. So it's, it's important to come and prepare for it. And that's what we covered in the session. We covered you know, what the point of the certification program is, what it's not, right? What we're going to cover and what can you do? What resources can you go and look for using the Gremlin docs and tutorial site to make sure that you're prepared for the exam? Because beyond just some of the chaos engineering basics, we do get into some of the more advanced topics there, right? And a few Gremlin specific-ish um, components so it is really useful to attend the prep session. Now, as Candy mentioned, it is, it's on demand. Uh, so anybody can access it, uh, no problem. It's really easy. Just go to uh, the Gremlin website and you'll, you'll find it. As the whole landscape is changing and uh, roles are changing, responsibility is changing, what role do you think this, this kind of certificate program play? Number one, in not just telling people, teaching people, training people, certifying them, but also actually helping them move 
from from their comfort zone and move to a much more challenging field because market is evolving. Yeah, absolutely not. That's a great point. Um, we do see a lot of this, right? We see a lot of people who are trying to move into this sort of hot position of, of SRE, whether that be your performance engineers, your QA testers. I actually used to work in QA, so I saw a lot of this, right? There's this focus on reliability. Um, and I think this is a great first step, right? In making that change. Good way to see if you are interested in chaos engineering principles. You know, that's some of the feedback we've gotten is uh, we've seen a bunch of testers and performance engineers taking this course and becoming really interested in how they could potentially use this as a resource to investigate this new uh, this new career path. But I do want to add something else. You know, beyond just changing careers, there's always this desire to innovate the field with, that you're in right now, right? So this is something that I saw in QA all of the time. Um, beyond, you know, there's a there's a big focus on non-functional testing now, right? So testing your application, your system beyond just sort of click this button, does it work? Does the login function work? Reliability has become a huge component of this, right? Within sort of these innovative or modern testing teams. Um, for performance engineers, chaos engineering, what we found offers this extra level of sort of pinpoint performance engineering and performance testing. It's like, well, what is, how does my system respond both under load and when CPU resources are consumed, right, to a certain degree? And that's something that you can, you can use cast engineering to sort of bolster and improve the, the current work you're doing. And in addition to, right, trying to maybe potentially make that, uh, that career shift as well. I'd also add to what Alex said there that, you know, this is a, not an easy role to be able to be a, doing site reliability engineering, DevOps work for like critical systems that need to be up and running that are mission critical. And, you know, if you look in the news recently, for example, Robin Hood, they got fined $70 million uh, because of downtime and outages. And I come from that world. I used to work at the National Australia Bank for six years, I worked on on call rotations, full stack software engineering for mortgage broking, foreign exchange, internet banking. And, you know, there are regulators that will fine you if you don't meet um, your requirements and they come and they will audit you. It's very frequent, once a quarter at least. And so that's a whole world that you need to understand and be ready for. And I think that it's just becoming more and more important. Reliability is more important than it was before. And also I think we're seeing more outages and we're seeing larger fines than we've ever seen before because we all rely so much on the internet being up and running all the time. So that's like, you know, it's a challenging role, but it's so important for the world as a whole. So I think that's really motivating factor too for everyone. As you, uh, Tammy, earlier saying, you know, that when you're talking to a lot of folks, you know, this was uh, a program that you came up with. There are a lot of other things in the pipeline. I do understand there are a lot of things that you cannot share, you know, publicly yet. But if you can just give a glimpse, you know, what are the things that you're working from, uh, from, from the perspective of, you know, the training certification or uh, other plans to help the community? Yeah, definitely. So Alex and I, we talk to different folks from across the community, customers, and ask them, like, what would you like to see next as part of this certificate program? And we talked about that at our prep session as well. A lot of folks really want to get the next levels of the exam. So this is the foundation level. We're looking forward to developing additional levels beyond levels beyond that. And we're also looking at building technical specialist tracks. So Alex can talk more to that. He's got a lot of really great, exciting ideas. And if you have more ideas, you should reach out to him and let him know before we roll out those programs. So now's a great time to reach out to our team. Yes, before I go into some of those plans, I, I want to reiterate that. Please do reach out, right? If you all have um, a desire or an excitement around certain kinds of certifications or any sort of you know learning program from Gremlin, we want to hear about it. So reach out to me via LinkedIn, email, whatever it might be. Um, but to talk a little bit about some of these technical specialist roles. And we've talked a lot about the different personas, different uh, roles in a company or an organization that can utilize chaos engineering. And ultimately, that just means there are a ton of different use cases for it, right? There are so many different things you can do uh, with chaos engineering or a solution like Gremlins. And we want to make sure that we have educational uh, uh educational resources available to sort of teach and coach through all of those different use cases, right? So maybe it's something around what does dependency failure testing look like, right? Maybe you want to do something around, I don't know, um, you know, region and zone redundancy or availability, like, or host and node failure, right? All of these things, all these different kinds of use cases for chaos entry. We want to make sure that um, there are certificate tracks for things like that, right? So once again, if there is something you'd like to see, reach out and let us know because uh, we'll definitely be listening. 
Awesome. Uh, I'm sure that people will reach out to both you, Tammy. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the success of this program, but also uh, why you created it and how it's helping uh, the ecosystem. Uh, thanks for your time today. And I would love to have you both on the show again. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. Yes, thank you so much. It's great to be here.